control structure special meeting for June 12, 2024 at 8.30 a.m. Roll call of board members. Russo. Here. Spencer. Here. Wolfson. Here. Ostergren. Okay. Good morning, everyone. My name is Linda Stevens. My name is not on the special assessment roll, but I'm here. Uh, pertaining to the Questview Estates Condo Association. I'm writing this letter I have handed out on behalf of the above referenced association pertaining to this assessment. We have protested both in person, in writing, and now you get to hear our voices. We believe the assessment of $6,948.80, which is the total per percent of apportionment is 0.587822, <laughs> for the above reference property is neither fair, consistent, and or equitable based upon similar types of properties. Even compared to the commercial and government properties, this is one of the highest single assessments in the special assessment district. I would also like to remind you that state law compels you to make special assessments fair and consistent. When comparing Deer Run Estates Condo Association, there are similarities and vast differences. Deer Run owns a larger parcel of lakefront property, but is similarly used like the above reference parcel. Both properties are primarily used as a parking area for beach and picnic use, and both properties have less than 10 boats on lifts in the lake. The primary difference between the two properties is the number of members in the two associations. Deer Run has 446 members, whose properties were included in the special assessment district, while Questview is being assessed with 46 members that were originally not included in the special assessment, assessment district. Deer Run members place a heavier use and burden on the lake, but their total type factor is 0.25, whereas the Questview total property type factor is 23% or 0.587822. I believe in a review and comparison of the formula used to make these assessments is warranted. It appears that the over 100 member group gets a percentage, while the under 100 members is assessed based upon a whole number. There are seven properties listed on the assessment roll for Deer Run, and their three-year assessment is $75.53, which is 0.008389% each. The current three-year assessment for the Quest View would be $151.06 for each of the 46 properties not included in the Special Assessment District. Even if the Quest View parcels assessment is reduced from 0.5 to 0.37, the new three-year rate assessment would be $5,211.66 or 60 cents or approximately $113.30 for each assessed owner. If the rate is changed from 0.5 to 0.25, the new rate would be $3,474.40 or 7,553 each, which is consistent with how uh, similar sized condo associations are being calculated. Uh, the 0.25 is a fair and more equitable assessment. 
According to Mr. Shepke, the Ross Common County delegated authority, he was unaware of what criteria or authority the engineers and attorneys used to make the distinction as to why condo keyhole are split between greater than 100 members or less than 100 members. Of the 866 condo keyholes parcels in the entire project, there's only one condo group that has more than 100 members, and that is the Deer Run with 446 members. The other condo keyhole groups with less than 100 members are Questview with 46 members, Eagle Shores Association has seven members, Northern Shores Association has 10 members, and Whispering Pines Association has nine members. All of these, when combined, have a smaller impact than the Deer Run Condo Association. The remaining condo keyhole assessments are for individual properties. Deer Run has 446 properties, which makes up 51% or 51 of this category. Why is the assessment larger for the larger use group receiving a lesser assessment percentage? To be consistent, fair, and equitable, all properties should be the same class and category and assessed the same way. During a telephone conversation on Sunday, June 6th, and meeting with your delegated authority, Mr. Shepke, he also felt the 0.5 was too high for the above reference property. He stated in front of two members of the association, he was willing to recommend to this board of commissioners that a fair assessment would be the same rate as Deer Run Condo at 0.25. During his Sunday call, he indicated, time is up. It is. I'm sorry. That's okay. We have in writing too, so that helps. Yeah, because it's all in writing, we can finish looking okay. and reading this before That's any fine. decisions. But thank you so much for listening. I appreciate it. You are welcome. Thank you. Let me turn this off. Is there any other public comment? Okay. Uh, Craig Cotterman, Old Trail Drive. <clears throat> Glasses. And move to authorize a transfer of 190000 from tax payments to the Open Lake Special Assessment Fund. Um, I guess, is it possible to get a list of how this money is being spent? Do you have a ledger or a list? I guess I'm concerned on how this special assessment money will be spent and what it will be spent for. Um, I understand that the dam needs improvements, but then again, there's all these other things like increasing the lake level of Houghton Lake. Uh, I'm against that. I think I've wrote a protest already. I'll be protesting at the tax tribunal as well. Do you intend to use the special assessment money to uh, raise the lake level of Hope Lake? Can I ask you that question, darling? Do I intend to use the money? Does the board intend to? Supposed to answer. We're not supposed to answer, but I can get with you after and, talk, and have I, a conversation. I did ask your, uh, is your attorney present? Is, uh, mm -hmm. oh, I, I never got your name. But, we can't have back and forth. You, well, you're you're here for public say, comment to just state at the uh, at the meeting at the high school <clears throat> that the special assessment money could be used to raise the lake level of Holton Lake. I was just wondering if she remembered that or not. Okay. Yes, I won't. I don't have to look at you. But, uh, and again, <clears throat> the reason being is we live in a low lying area were frequently flooded. Uh, and uh, the statistics and the facts would most definitely prove <clears throat> that uh, it's really quite unconstitutional to raise the lake level of Houghton Lake when you're damaging not only the ecosystem of the lake, but people's land and property. <clears throat> uh, I'm not sure if I need to hire an attorney at this point. Uh, I do believe you've made statements that are quite clearly that 
you stated that you intend to enforce the legal lake level of Houghton Lake. But then there's a whole lot of contradictory evidence uh, uh, coming from this board. Uh, if you had a <clears throat> you had a sheet saying on how you wanted to seasonably adjust the lake level of Houghton Lake. Uh, anyway, I'm I'm really confused. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm really confused. <clears throat> <clears throat> I'm really confused on what you intend to use this money for, what you can use it for, and what you can't use it for. You've already spent an incredible amount of money, $190,000, uh, and uh, it should have, again, you're using special assessment funds for different things, and maybe even for different lakes. I'm not sure how you combine your money. Uh, I guess I can't sit up here and repeat myself, but Raising a lake level for Houghton Lake is not a benefit to me and my family. Uh, we live in fear of people like uh, David Russo, Mark Melbourne. They bank water. They flooded our land. Uh, we live on a high, high level of erosion. We got eight miles of lake pointing to the west. And when the wind blows, we get the wind-driven tides and we get flooded. Uh, raising the lake level of Houghton Lake uh, will not only damage our land, but it will make our property much have less value. Uh, we're in a floodplain, and thank you. Is there any other public comment? Anyone on Zoom? Oh. Good morning, commissioners. I'm Bob Fry from the Higgins Lake Land Conservancy. And I want to encourage you to support the fulfillment of the application for the Eagle permit. As I understand it, there's a lot more to that, a um, lot of work to do that. And the expense may be more than you originally considered. But the Higgins Lake Land Conservancy has contributed substantial funds to this effort so far, as you well know. And um, if the commissioners um, aren't willing to help subsidize the application of the permit, it's not a um, it's not a good reflection on the progress we've made so far. I will say that um, in my testimony uh, before you previously that I mentioned that the Higgins Lake Land Conservancy is willing to help in um, seeing this through. So if it comes to be a matter of funds for this effort, I'm sure um, the Conservancy and the people of Higgins Lake will um, step up to the plate if need be. So I, I hope there's no reason for you to deny additional funding for the application of the Eagle permit for the modification of the Cut River Dam. Any questions? And talk. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Harry Milburn, Ross Common Township Clerk. And I just once again want to appeal to the commissioners to maybe consider a um, lake level and management village or a small amount that's countywide to cover these costs instead of imposing the special assessment. Okay, thank you. Any other? Yes. <clears throat> I'm Dave Shinneman. Um, I'm a, a delegate for the Markey Township um, Assessment 
advisory board. Um, and I see that you guys are going to be proposing to give Chase Shepke an increase today. I think it's something that we just started. I don't understand how someone can be given an increase when he hasn't even contacted anybody on the advisory board and said, hey, we're going to have some meetings and stuff like that. Um, I know he's doing other stuff behind the scenes, but I thought we had some kind of input on this and he hasn't even reached out to anybody on our committee. Um, so I just want you guys to take that into consideration when you decide to give them an increase. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Okay. Higgins Lake, the delegated authority update. Chase. All right. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. So I think last time I told you I would go in detail on what the perm what was requested on the permit. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So this is what was requested for the permit. Please inc include the proposed construction methods of all proposed work including addition of temporary boards attached to the sheet pile, installation of plates with flop gates, and installation of new and additional logs to stop log bays. Please provide a more detailed alternative analysis, which includes all options considered and why this is the least impactful, feasible, and prudent proposal. At minimum, please include variables such as alternative locations, configurations, styles, layout designs and methods, construction technologies, and other constraints, local regula regulations and resource issues. Discussion should also include why the do nothing alternative is not feasible or prudent. Please include both overhead and cross-sectional drawings of all proposed work, including the addition of temporary boards attached to the sheep pile, removal of current plate attached to the top of flop gate and installation of wider plate, installation of new and additional stop logs to stop log bay, and the addition of four to eight field stone to unconfined opening up to the top of footing. The overhead and cross sections should include dimensions of the proposed changes and amount of material to be removed or added. So that was what was requested on the permit. I guess, do you guys have any questions? Yes, Chase. Um, can you get with Mr. Fry and see what we can work out on accommodating this? Yeah, it just, it seems like a lot of, there's enough piddly stuff to take some time to, to get through yeah, it. I, I understand. It's, it's a lot of stuff thrown at us it's not necessary but and also maybe we could modify the permit to lessen some of that request you know what i'm saying so some things are not critical at this time to do maybe yeah yep yeah like the stop all the stop log base can just be ignored yep. yeah um so i guess perhaps get with mr fry and see if we can work out something on this Yes. Yeah. Uh, Chase, a uh, uh, recent ruling just came down by our local circuit court judge, the declaratory judgment that we are to maintain the levels on Higgins Lake. We have a duty to do that. Are these uh, improvements going to help you do that and uh, get the levels to where they should be this summer? And uh, if not, what else uh, do we have to do to uh, get these levels maintained? So the point of this is to help maintain what what the majority of it helps is not losing water due to wave action, which when you have a strong um, west wind, just like Craig brought up on hey, on Houghton Lake, you have a similar not as, I guess, the way it doesn't create, it's not that big of an event, but it does, will cause water to go over the structure. So the idea is that this will stop that water from going over the structure. So it, it does help in maintaining legal lake level when we, during those drier months. 
at the extent uh, what of about helms, back, I do not know. Right. Uh, back in 2010, Spicer Engineering came up with some recommendations, and one of them included a restrictor plate. Is that something that we can uh, consider doing? I mean, after all, we do have a duty. We, we were commanded by the court on a declaratory judgment that we had to get that done. Uh, what, you want uh, my honest opinion on it? To do that, Chase. I, I don't I don't like the Spicer report. I think I think no offense to Spicer. I, I the the Spicer report shows a spillway bottom, shows the footing is continuous, and that's not the case out there. So if there's no continuous footing, a plate is useless. It's absolutely useless because water's just gonna go under it. So one of the things so, you're working on is a continuous one of the things you're working on is a continuous getting getting that. Uh, I guess it's the uh, the footing. No, uh, no, bottom. no. All I'm all I'm looking at doing is putting more stone in there to protect the footing so that so it doesn't continue to scour out deeper to, to kind of replace rock. As far as the footing all the way across, you're talking a whole nother ball game as far as permitting because that would include so watering and everything so else. Like yes. Yep. This is temporary. Okay. Chase, on that permit, we've asked for a lot of changes. We supply information that we can at this point. Will we be approved or possibly approved for certain portions of the permit? Or is this have to encompass everything? I mean, you know what I'm saying? I, I think we should. I think we'll be improved. I think we'll be approved of everything except for maybe putting the rocks in the spillway is it like a 50 50. okay well we had an offer to help with the funding on this and my suggestion is that we make contact and see if we can achieve that to move forward right uh chase have they taken into account back in 2014 that the rocks were removed from uh from that spillway by the commissioners I illegally I don't know what Eagle does. So. No, no, I'm I'm not saying Eagle. I'm saying that the commissioners, if we presented to Eagle and told the commissioners that those rocks were illegally removed. I guess I don't understand the question. Uh, back in 2010, the commissioners, uh, under the direction, along with the DNR, uh, Eric, removed Eric. rocks. Eric. So we're not, well, he's talking about putting rocks back in, so I'm just saying. You're asking him a question. He's answered it. He doesn't know. As far as Eagle, as far as the illegal act, was there ever something filed against the commissioners for doing it? I'm not talking about that. You just said that. I just mentioned that they did it. That's all. And I you said an illegal act. And what? did he present the information for an illegal act? Well, We're not he, going down that road. Did he talk that the rocks were removed? The Eagle. That's why. That's all I'm asking. Has that been mentioned? He applied a permit, and that permit has to put rocks back in. Now, either they're going to approve it or not approve it, and there's certain things that they want. We have to move forward from there. Right. To put them back in, they had to be removed in the first place. They were not removed from the spillway. Chase, go on. All right. I think that's it, unless there's more questions on Higgins Lake. What kind of, a, what kind of an expense are we talking about here, Chase? And by the way, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. I, I, I was just asking. I hope you understand that. I would think under. I would think under ten grand for all the work. Okay. Lake Saint Helen. All right. For Lake Saint Helen, we had our first hearing. Um, I think there was just around a hundred people who showed up, so that was pretty good attendance. The second hearing is going to be tentatively scheduled for July 31st at the Ross County Schools. We're just waiting for them to approve that. Uh, I sent the Lake Level Committee this morning the RFP for engineering on um, St. Helen. So you guys can review that and let me know when that goes out. I plan on spending it. I plan on sending it to four firms. It would be Spicer Group, Shovel, OHM, and uh, Pride and Newhoff. Uh, and then currently, we've only had two individuals apply for the advisory board for St. Helen. So 
um, we might want to put like an ad in the paper or get the, the word out a little more about that. That's what we did in the past. Um, and I'll bring it to the Richfield Township Board that we're seeking it, people for the advisory board. In the bid packet that you're proposing to send out, is that going to be looking at putting in a spillway versus a dam? It's it, There's an alternative design to see if um, a firm thinks a spillway is feasible. Thank you. So, yes. Madam Chair, point order. Yes. Yeah, you, went, you went from Higgins to Lake St. Helen? Mm hmm Okay, did you skip by holding or are we gonna do that now? We'll go back to Holton Lake after. That way we can go right back in. I did accidentally skip it, sorry. <laughs> uh, that's it for St. Helen. How about Holton Lake, Chase? Um, so currently all, just so you guys know, all the gates are closed on Holton Lake. One is 25% open so that there's some flow going through. So all the bays are closed minus one that, that left just about a foot open. So there's some flow. Um, beyond that, I think you guys are going to talk about Holton Lake enough this evening, unless you have some specific questions. Um, as far as the advisory board, Chase, have you reached out to them to let them know um, tentatively when you plan on meeting and what I, ideas? I have not. Like nope. Nope. Everything he said okay. was true. I have not had time. So okay. there, there's not at this point, there's no need to contact the advisory board yet. Well, I believe wasn't the plan to start after the assessment role and everything was approved. Then yeah, so I, yeah, the advisory board doesn't have really any say in the assessments because you guys decide what those assessments are. The advisory board is for essentially everything after, but I, I should be getting a hold of the advisory board. I just haven't had time with all the everything else going on. Well, until we get to the design phase, there's not much point in it. Any other questions for Chase on Holton? Yeah. Lake? Uh, Chase, are you currently handling the administrative functions regarding uh, the uh, special assessment district for Holton Lake, or, or is our controller still handling that part and you're just handling the other functions? Define administrative. Uh, working with the attorneys, working with the uh, engineering groups. Uh, I know you're doing some of that, but I'm, uh, you know, putting, putting everything together. Are you doing all of that now, no. Chase? I, I'm doing some of that. Okay. Okay. That's why I was curious. Yep. Yeah. 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 With, with help from, you know, the, the, the team, there's different, I guess, delegated tasks that each person does within the SAD team. I, to say everything runs, I do everything is not true. That's what I was wondering. So, who else is performing some of the other functions on your team? What, like I don't know, like the lawyers, the engineers, uh, Taylor answers the email and the phones. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? So, unfinished business. Huh? Yeah. Yeah unless he's going to be part of this next section. Okay, so then we, we have no unfinished business, so we are on to the assessment role and apportionments. I would like to remind all the commissioners that we need to wait for everything to be presented before any questions will be entertained. Um, each commissioner will have the chance to ask a question before a commissioner can ask a second question and we will have no back and forth. Good morning. Um, again, commissioners, this is Stacy Hassan um, from Fahey Schultz Bursic Roads along with uh, Luke O'Brien from Spicer Group. 
We are part of the team that has been assisting and uh, assisting in getting information to your delegated authority. And we have a, a small PowerPoint, um, I think that we'd like to show. I know Amanda has that. We've provided copies of the <coughs> pages to you to do that. So I'm not sure if that can be shown at this time. No, because he didn't get it in time. Okay. Got the old one. Okay. So the board has these, and so we'll go through some of this uh, with you. Um, basically, it's just a presentation, and it was information um, on the presentation that I'll go through you, with you. So as you know, um, we met with the county board to go through the process after the district was set by the circuit court as to what factors are for a methodology with regard to how the assessments would be levied. So we went through that with the County Board of Commissioner members and we also had meetings prior to the actual assessment notices going out with um, property owners. We had a public meeting to go through, this is the uh, you know, factors that will be considered in making the assessment. And then we put those factors and what each factor would be for each parcel on the website. So long before the May hearing, we provided information to the public. You could go on, pull up your, what, your property, your neighbor's property, whatever it is, and look at the factors that would apply to that particular piece of property. We did that because all along the process, up until today, we want as much property owner input to ensure that we have the factors as accurate as possible. So that step was taken and many people utilized that to assist us in making sure that we had the factors correctly. So Commissioner Estegren asked what the process was and how we went through this um, to explain, as you know, we have a website and Terpani, um, Taylor Terpani specifically, assisted the board and the delegated authority with answering phone calls, answering emails, responding to communications from property owners and townships, et cetera, with regard to questions or comments with regard to those apportionment factors. So she assisted in doing that and putting together the notices and providing information to the press, et cetera, with regard to that aspect. Spicer Group assisted the delegated authority with collecting the data to, and to put into the assessment once you decide the apportionments and the methodology, all 7,000 some parcels, or excuse me, however many some thousand parcels there are, need to be five. evaluated and put into, for each parcel, all of these different factors. So that was the role that what they played. Um, in addition to that role, their role and Fahey Schultz's role was to assist the delegated authority in taking all that information and developing not only what the factors were, but the weights for each factor. And then given a certain set of circumstances, how do those factors apply to a, a specific parcel based on the information we received? So that's the kind of the process that we, we went through throughout since property owners were given the information to make comment. So the notices went out with what the best information that we had as to how to apply those factors to specific properties and their assessed, uh, uh, estimated assessment amount went out in those notices for purposes of the May 23rd hearing. After those notices went out, we got a lot more property owner phone calls saying, hey, we have impeded access. We combined our parcels and it might not have shown up yet. We have more slips or less slips. The neighbor has more slips. All of these different types of things. So there was a wide array of comments with regard to how the factors apply to specific parcels. So we took each of those, investigated those, met weekly as a team, provided it. So the Trapani communicated that information to us. Spicer Group and Fahey Schultz, along with the delegated authority, investigated and provided information to the delegated authority. Uh, the delegated authority then made the ultimate call as to whether to make the change or not make the change. So that happened all the way up to May 23rd at the hearing. At the hearing, and which is the purpose of the hearing, is for property owners to attend and let us know more information as to 
Did we get something, you know, was there more information that maybe we didn't have about your property or neighbor's property, et cetera? Information was provided at that hearing with regard to specifics on different properties. Not only at the hearing, but we took the extra step of having a separate room with computer stations, providing more opportunities for property owners to give us information. And I believe that four of the five of you, of you commissioners were present at that meeting to see how the process worked. I think everybody but Commissioner Ostergren was present and saw the types of information that was being received. We also gave property owners a little bit of extra time after that hearing so they could tell their neighbors, et cetera, if you have an issue, you know, you needed to, to be present at that meeting, but if you had more information you wanted to give us, give us that by the set date, and we will again investigate that, make information, and sometimes the investigation took a little bit of time to accumulate all of the documents that were necessary for the delegated authority to make a site visit, et cetera, to get to the point where we called balls. Ultimately, we got the information to the delegated authority to make balls and strikes. So calls. So it worked the way it was supposed to. The purpose of the notice is to give property owners notice. Hey, this is what it is. It's based on this information. Make a phone call. The purpose of the hearing. Hey, this is the information we have. We're hearing what you're saying. This is our response to it. Investigate to make changes. So that's exactly what happened. And we have been working diligently on the huge amount of phone calls and comments and emails that we got to get you to the rule that we provided to you. So that's a lot to digest for a county board on the specifics of something that's taken months to get to the point where we have is what we think is the best and most accurate information possible. So to better able to allow the board to digest the information, we decided to use color coding um, to allow you to see exactly what happened. And this, and I, I'm going to apologize, but not apologize. We didn't get it to you as quickly as we would have liked because we continued to respond to property owner comments, collect information to allow the delegated authority to make decisions. But we feel we've encaptured everything we have today. So the board was emailed a roll and it's big and it's thick and it's color coded. And I thank Spicer Group for working way late into the night over the last couple of days to get you this. And so the color coding shows where changes were made from the day we sent out the notices. So if there is a highlighted um, parcel, that's where a change from was made after the notices were mailed out based on property owners or municipality communications to the delegated authority through the website, through however they communicated to us. We investigated and the delegated authority made a change. We summarized all of those changes in a spreadsheet that we provided to you this morning. So as an example, I'm going to take some time to go through this with you, if that's all right, Madam Chair, so yes. everyone understands it, because I know this is important to the board to understand it, and so um, this just encapsulates hundreds of hours that I know the delegated authority spent in trying to get this right. So I'm going to start referring to the spreadsheet that starts with this lovely purple color, and the purple color is each of the parcels where a change was made to a property with regard to boat slips. And so you'll see that changes were made to either add slips or remove slips based on property owner communications, whether it was that property owner itself or it was somebody else making a contact, hey, I, I looked at that online and I think you got the boat slips mm -hmm. wrong on somebody else's property. And so with regard to that, I think there's one, two, three, four, five changes that were made with regard to boat slips. There is one with regard to boat slips that I wanna very specifically point out to the board of special note. And that is in the PowerPoint presentation on slide eight, and it refers to Lyman's on the lake. 
And it's a unique situation that we had a property owner, not that property owner, but a neighbor call after the hearing and say, for the original rule, we assigned that parcel as a commercial parcel with four cabins. We received a phone call from a property owner asking why the boat slips were not assigned to these parcels. We investigated, the delegated authority reviewed and confirmed that there was actually 36 boat slips that were separately rented separate from the cabins. And so if there's a cabin that has a boat slip, we treat it as a cabin. We don't do that as a boat slip. If, if there's separate boat slips that are for a different commercial reason, then we give them different factors. So based on the fact after investigation that these boat slips are separate from the cabin rental, um, we did make a change adding boat slips to these parcels. And so when you're looking at the purple spreadsheet, you'll see the middle one says add 36 boat slips. That is why that is a change. It's such a significant change that we wanted to bring that to your attention and detail out the specifics in a, a slide so that you have that information as if you want more specific information, please ask. We'll try to get that to you, but that is that is the reason why there was that significant of a change. Any, uh, now we will move to the second page, which is the orange, um, and that is property type. So when we're looking at property type, it's changing from hotel resort to keyhole, hotel resort to residential, basic, vacant public to residential, et cetera. And we had three changes with regard to these issues on these three parcels. Um, and uh, we had, again got information from property owners, investigated that, provided the information to the delegated authority. He did a great deal of the investigating himself. And so these changes were made. The next page of the spreadsheet is blue, which are the sparse, uh, parcel splits and combos. And so the assessment rule was updated based on parcel splits and combos. There were a few of these um, that were combined that we just didn't have the updated information or split, et cetera. And so this is updated as we have today. You may receive questions about, I'm going to the township and I'm gonna get my parcels combined next week. For purposes of this rule, that won't take place in time for this rule. For the next big project, that may take in time, May, may, will be in time for that project. And so that would apply to the next time, but there has to be a cutoff. We've coordinated that with each of the townships. And this is what was in time where we made changes. So the parcels have to be active for 24. All right, the next is the yellow, which is the width of the access point. And so if the board recalls, there's different, uh, Factor weights 0 0.5, 0 0.25, or a 1.75 based on the type of access. We received property owner calls, and um, the delegated authority made some changes to three parcels based on the investigations that we that took place as a result of that property owner information. The next one is green, and it looks like a lot of change, but it's actually like in one subdivision <laughs> for the most part. Um, and so this is where we got a call about impeded access. And so uh, the delegated authority reviewed this and um, along with the information that we were able to provide and made a change, changing the access factor to an impeded access. And so that's why you see those. These are, I think, generally in the same area. Yes, it's, it's one subdivision and the heated access they're talking about is a combination of a beaver dam and a large amount of silt. And then the red, uh, the red is lake access reviewed based on input received by landowners. And then uh, it was confirmed with some that there was zero access for some of these parcels we did we, they were in the district, 
We got information after uh, significant research that they in fact do not have access. And so the delegated authority made the decision to update this and change it to zero. And so um, with regard to that, those are the changes that are in the role before the board. A, a couple other things I think that we'd like to highlight. One is as we expected, because we didn't do a title search of every parcel in the greater Houghton Lake area. After the court's decision, we learned of easements that gave properties access to the lake that aren't in the current boundary. We thought this might happen because we didn't do title searches of everywhere around. And so in the event, those cannot be added unless they stipulate to doing so without going to circuit court and having a whole new hearing. We've kept a list of those. And so if we end up going to court for other reasons between now and the next assessment, we'll ask for that update to the boundaries. To go to court just to add those handful of parcels, would the cost of going to court to update them would be far exceed the amount of any assessment they would have. So I'm not sure that it merits it from a financial perspective to do it absent going to court for some other reason, but we have kept close records with regard to that issue. And then the final issue I want to speak to is with regard to QuestView. And so to provide information and answer questions the board might have with regard to that. Um, there is, and I think Ms. Stevens, accurately portrayed how the assessments were levied. So if it is a keyhole and there was over a hundred or over a hundred is 0.25 and there's only one keyhole situation, which is um, deer run that meets that. And then anything under a hundred was received at 0.5. I am not making a recommendation to the board as to what to do with that. Right now it's in 0.5 based on the apportionment methodology that we utilize, I'll explain that methodology, and it would be up to the board if they wish to make any changes to that. So when we are looking at a back lot versus a keyhole, et cetera, a, a regular, let's say you're in a subdivision and there are 40 lots in the subdivision and you have a little park at the front that gave you access, all of those lots that were back lots got a 0.5, which is very similar, all the subdivisions, unless there was some sort of impeded access or the access was less than 12 feet, every subdivision around the lake got a 0.5. So 0.5 was used, whether the subdivision was four parcels or 40 parcels, it got a 0.5. And so point, the, the thought behind 0.5 for keyholes of under 100 was to match that back lot access of a subdivision frontage, so to speak. So uh, if there was a keyhole that had a park or a parcel greater than 12 feet, they would be treated like a, back, a subdivision back lot owner for all intents and purposes as to the apportionment amount of 0.5. There, when we're looking at that, so if you're looking at Quest View and looking at how much those keyhole lots pay for that park, it varies. Like if you're also looking at the back lots of a subdivision and how many, it, they're all gonna vary depending on the number of lot, keyholes, the number of lots, but they're all at that same amount how, with the exception of Deer Run. Deer run, when we're looking at, again, I think we've talked about the intensity of the use. When we're looking at deer run, it's several hundred parcels using one, not 10, not 40, not 50. It's a lot. And so with that, we came up with a different factor given how many people were using the same, how many properties had access to the same amount and recommended a, a, a lower number for them for 0.25. So not making a recommendation specifically as to QuestView, but providing more information to the board as to how we came up with that 0.5 number and why we made the call at 100. And again, it's like very similar to a back lot subdivision. And the number of lots you have on these subdivisions are all over the place in terms of 
how many backlots there are. So with that, um, I do have uh, a little cheat sheet with some final numbers. So you don't have to do the math in your heads with regard to the big players, with regard to the, the role we have before you right now. Yeah. yeah. So in case there's any questions about the number of parcels and um, 446, it was the previous number. They did have a resident that combined five parcels into one. So that number has now gone down to 442. So yes, we, we did recommend treating uh, one parcel front lot being used for 442 people different than <laughs> ones that are significantly lower. And again, that's the, ultimately this board's decision to make. Um, with the revisions, uh, a couple things we just wanna note for you. And it, again, some of this is in the, PowerPoint slides, but basically change with the changes made and the role that you have before you now, um, if you're a front lot with access more than 12 feet of regular residential, you're looking at a total change in the role was $302.12 originally, total over, you know, spread over three years, down uh, up to 302.66, so 54 cents increase based on all the changes that we made. Um, if you're, uh, and this again is without interest, if that you're on the lake and you have that reduced amount, less than 12 feet, it went up uh, 18 cents from $100.71 total assessment to $100.89. If you're a regular back lot with greater than 12 feet, it went up that was, that was the annual assessment. Yeah, the annual, oh, excuse me, annual assessment, I'm sorry. The annual assessment being, I'm sorry, it went up just a matter of cents for that. I, I got missed, I misspoke. Both of these are regular lot greater than 12 feet. Annually, it went up uh, 16 cents, I think. 18 cents. 18 cents. So not a significant change from what was mailed out, even though we made all these changes. Um, and then your indirect, your back lot went up um, in the end, uh, annually without interest, nine cents. So not a big dollar amount change, even though there was, you know, I would call this not that significant amount of changes based on the, the total rule, but changes were indeed made based on the property owner um, comments. Is there anything else you wanted to add, Luke? We have worked nonstop on this issue, responding to property owner calls and questions and investigating since that meeting, since really these letters went out. And so uh, that's the reason you got these late, but we feel like we've incorporated everything and everything, like I said, to call or email was communicated, investigated, um, sometimes in person, and then ultimately a decision made by your delegated authority as to how to handle. I guess the one thing I would add is, you know, what does investigation mean? Um, so that depends on what the situation was, but, you know, we spoke with the residents. In some cases, we talked to the assessors. Uh, in some cases, case went out and, and investigated something out in the field. Um, but another component was we, we worked with the register of deeds to, to pull deeds, look for deeds, and you know, that sort of thing. So we've there's different tools in our toolbox and depending on the situation, we tried to apply as many tools as we could to, to figure out what the answer was. And so um, the townships, to give you the information as to what the total township assessments are, the county and the DNR, I do have that information available. So Denton Township with its six parcels and its at large has a total assessment of 28,738 dollars Lake Township with its three parcels and its at, late, at large has a total assessment of 16,302. Markey Township with its one parcel and its at large is 14,317.50. Ross Common Township has five parcels and its at large, so that was 14,940. Ross Common County has seven assessable parcels and with its $10,000 annual commitment over the three years, that would total 38,474.57. And then MDNR with its 21 accessible parcels 
the as, as total assessment is 92,236.67. And with that, Madam Chair, we'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Madam Chair? Yes. One question. With regards to Questview uh, and Ms. Stevens' comments, and according to her, uh, Chase thought that it could be under assessed, over assessed, or whatever. Uh, it, it, is this set in stone now, or do we still have the ability to change these to, to meet, you know, whatever objections, or if we thought it was fair, and, and if we wanted to, and if we wanted to, and, and we wanted to change them, would we have to change any others? Would it, any of the other uh, assessments, and would it be fair to the other assessments? I guess that's my question, because she seems to have brought up some valid points. So this board has the opportunity to make a change that's requested however you wish. That change will affect everyone's assessment because it has to be retabulated in terms of the dollar amount. Is that hard to do when you make a change? This is in no. calculations right in, right in the spreadsheet. It is not hard already. to do. No, it just needs to be recalculated. Correct. You don't have to print out another uh, one of these or anything. <laughs> we can if you'd like, but yeah. No, 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 no. No, no thank you. Hey, I'm sure. Yes. I have several questions. First of all, since we're already talking about deer run and so forth, my only question on that issue is, should this be appealed? Is what we've done here presented today justifiable in court? So no, Being fair. So no attorney will ever guarantee um, a, a win, but I feel very comfortable <clears throat> with the assessment rule provided to you today, it is consistent throughout. And so again, if the board wants to make a change, um, I think that um, if you made a change somewhere in between, there might be justification for that too. I haven't went through every subdivision in the whole assessment rule to see what numbers compare to Quest View versus a different subdivision, et cetera to see where, all I know is everybody's less than 100 and we have everybody. My, my only concern is that yeah. everybody's treated fairly. Right, and so I, I guess I'm saying, I, I'm comfortable defending what mm -hmm. we did because it's- Do, do we consistent. feel this is as fair as we can be? This is what we came up with based on the methodology that we okay. have, yes. Um, Denton Township. It was brought to our attention Denton Township one parcel was a lift station. Has that been removed from their assessment? Do we know? So that was just brought in the last week or two. To okay, I, I know there's a couple of parcels that we have zeroed out because okay. of things. Like that. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure with Denton that we. We will okay. confirm that the parcel in question, how that has been taken. I, I think care Darlene of has a parcel number yeah. on her phone. Oh, you have the parcel number? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have, you have let's, let's, dead, let's handle that right now. Because I like to put Luke on the spot when I can. So. I took a photo of it, right? Yeah. It was the first one, right? Uh, yes. So, yeah. Zero, zero, three, dash, four, nine, five, dash, zero, six, four, dash, zero, 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 zero. It's the top one in green, right? It needs to be, yeah. You made a change to that. We did make a change that was related to the impeded access, but uh, if you're saying that it's, you know. I'm pretty sure that when they said that there's a lift station on there. We would want to get that revised then. It's currently being assessed. Okay. It, you know, and I understand this is last minute stuff because on the first page of 36 boat slips, I investigated that yesterday morning. Yeah. <laughs> I went and did a physical investigation and I talked with the owner and confirmed that and then relayed that information. So I understand why there's last minute stuff. Yeah, it's the first one. Two other things, when you talk about impeded access on all these greens, is what you're saying is apparently this is a canal with, because it's so full of silt and stuff. That, Correct, and there's a pretty significant beaver dam. Yeah. Okay. So we need to watch that. Should they decide to dredge that canal before the next project? Yes. 
Yes, absolutely. And, and that leads to the last question is you, you're creating a list of things that may need to be addressed with the next assessment. Will we be supplied with that list of properties? The yes, county? we have the list. Yeah, the county will be supplied with that list? Yes. All right. That's all my questions. Thank you. Madam Chair. Sorry, go ahead, Mark. I appreciate Mrs. Stevens coming in today and bringing us this letter. I'd like to point out a couple of things, and I appreciate Eric commenting on it earlier. The 866 condo, first, there is only one condo group with 100 members. She referenced Deer Run with 446. I understand it's going to change. Other condos are 100 members with Westview with 46. Eagle Shores Association, seven members. Northern Shores, 10 members. West Green Pines. All these combined have smaller impact than Deer Run. Ms. Stevens mentions in their final comments, we believe only fair, reasonable, and consistent and equitable system would be 2.25. I'm in total support of that, 0.25. Madam Chair. Consistent and equitable. Thank you. Madam Just comment. Just a second, Dave. Dave, do you have anything? Okay. Okay. There may be a controversy going on there. I believe he owns property in that. Okay. Take a thing to talk Madam about Chair. that. Yes. Um, once all this is set in stone, is there an annual review or does somebody then have to petition the court for a change or whatever? I, 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 think, this is, I think this is, these numbers are so small, it's relatively insignificant. I mean, so that's you know, a, that's but a great I, I question. really don't, everybody's looking at a special assessment districts and it costs all this money and, 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 it, and it is a big number to begin with, but when you spread it out over thousands of people, it's not that big of a number, but Will people have an opportunity to review this on an annual basis or or can they do they have to petition the court to change it? What, what do they have to do? Okay, I'm gonna unpack those questions. So with regard to this role, you're gonna be borrowing money based on this role. And for the three years that this is in effect, it cannot be reviewed. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. For the next one, so so when you borrow money, you're saying this is the role, this is it, you can't change it. For the next project after three years, it most definitely can be reviewed for that, the length of that assessment. So whether it's one year, it, it has to stay in place because you're bonding it. After that, then it can be reviewed whenever the county board decides. Like after you've paid for your bond issues and you're going an assessment here and there to collect funds for inspections, updates, et cetera, 15 years from now, then you can do that at any time you want. In terms of, so in terms of the um, revising the district boundaries, like I said, we got information about private easements that changed some of that. Um, that requires either a stipulation, them agreeing voluntarily to be part of the district or going to court again. And we have a list of those. So does that answer your question? Somewhat. I think one, one thing to add is when you are in a multi-year assessment, you are going to have some, I would call it with the role, in terms of if, if someone does now combine parcels. Someone's those have, get combined. Those get combined. Someone's got to go in on the computer, update it. Because at this point, if they do get combined, basically the, the you know once the roll is final, those percentages stick with those properties, and a two properties get combined together, you're basically going to add the two percentages together to make one. So but they the, can't change anybody else's. Right. So in the interim, there is going to be a little bit of maintenance that has to be done to it, but you can't. There's not going to be you know adding people or. or Changing oh, apportionment. Changing well, yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah. I just wonder what kind of term you're looking at, three year, <laughs> five year, 10 year, but it has Years. to do with the project. So if you have a project, which we don't have yet, uh, then that amount of money will be for three years, the bond will be for like three. So, so I, lawyers use the term, it depends. So this is just the interim project. So let's say um, this is for uh, $1.245 million. Let's say the ultimate project is double that and is closer to two and a half million. It's probably not gonna be spread in three years. It's probably gonna be spread in five to 10 years. And so 
because it needs to be financed differently. And so it's the length of the financing of the note. So three years is just how long we're financing this assessment, depending on the cost of a project, differs in how long the assessment will be spread over and how long that role is in place. So we did get a computation of cost for yes. the Holton Lake Lake level special assessment for the first three years. Correct. Um, I just want to make note that on here, because we had somebody make public comment regarding this, that nowhere on here are we using any funds to raising the lake level. Correct. Okay. Correct. So I believe the question posed, and I believe four of the five of you were there for that conversation is, if there's a raising of the lake level and the county is asked to do that, does the special assessment to pay for the court proceedings to do that? Yes. Is that anticipated? Has there been a board resolution to do that? No. Is it anticipated in this computation of cost? No. No. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think with all the information that we just got and some decisions that we have to look over in the paperwork, um, I, at this time, am not 100% comfortable making a decision. I don't know how anybody else feels. Eric, how do you feel about making a decision today or coming back for a special meeting to make the final? Either special meeting or our next meeting. Our next meeting. I, it might be too late in order for bonding issues and things like that. Check into it. It's not too late. Yes. Madam Chair, my recommendation would be to do it next Wednesday at 10 o'clock. I think it's, it, this is an important matter that bears the, the full pressure of the public mm -hmm. to make the decision. We're closed next, next Wednesday? Yeah. It's so I, I stand corrected. Then I would recommend possibly Thursday. Um, Thursday. But again, I, I, whatever the chair decides. I think we need to make sure this moves along in the appropriate time manner for bonding and everything. And if we need a special meeting, we should call that special meeting. And it may be best to have a special meeting just to deal with this. Also, when we have that meeting, is that when we will have a motion or resolution for this purpose? Okay. I think we ought to have a special meeting on it next week. I'd be in favor of that. I can't do it next Thursday. I've got a Northern Lakes Community uh, Mental Health Association meeting. And I would ask the chair Friday at 10. Friday, I know I cannot do, but I can do Tuesday. Tuesday at 10 sounds good, too. <laughs> I'm pretty Not much old. I'm, I'm pretty. 13. Oh, I'm sorry. That's August. I'm pretty much. On the much 18th, Eric has a meeting at 10 o'clock already. The question I would ask, Madam Chair, is does that give the sufficient time to put everything together? I'm pretty much open with any day as long as the catfish aren't biting. <laughs> and as far as Eric's commitment on Thursday, this takes precedence over that, in my opinion. I'd say so. What is going on? Okay, so Tuesday. Ooh. Tuesday morning, there's a 10 a.m. local emergency planning committee meeting. Would nine work for? I, I'd make it, Madam Chair. Generally, when we have special meetings in the past, we've always done it at 10 o'clock. I can't it, do Tuesday. 10 o'clock just gives people a chance to get here without trying to push through the security booth, and it's a little easier for everybody to get here at 10. We got three conference calls that morning, Zoom calls. Mm -hmm. How about Friday? No, you can't do it Friday. We're going to have to pick at 9 o'clock. The following week, then, Madam Chair. 
can probably switch our animals to the whole meeting. Do we want to do Thursday at 10? Yeah. We can if we, on Thursday, if he doesn't go to that yeah, one. I, yeah, I can do it if, I don't, if you if you guys can get me out of that meeting. <laughs> well, You're this wrong. takes precedence yeah. over that, so I didn't want to go anyway. <laughs> what time? Thursday's nine good for you, Dave. No, no, that's what we're trying to figure out. <laughs> Well, let's see it Monday. Let's see Monday. So it would need to be Monday afternoon because this room is already reserved. Okay. In the morning. Do we know what time in the afternoon? Um, any time after 12 would be fine. June 17th, correct? Yes. I can do that. Good. Monday at 1? Monday at 1, Madam Chair, sounds good to me. Monday at 1. And just to clarify for the posting for the um, clerk register of deed office, um, that is for the purpose of reviewing and approving the assessment role and apportionments for Houghton Lake. Correct. Okay. On to the next. The Increase in delegated authority pay, Shepke Consulting LLC. Is Chase still available? Looks like it. Chase, you're up. Can't hear you. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So I am uh, requesting an increased pay from my uh, the previous quoted amount to 125 due to the increased work and the skill level at which the increased work uh, needed for the work going forward. And that I guess that's it. Okay, Commissioner Astrigan. Thank you very much. Uh, our three lakes here in Ross Common, Higgins, Houghton, and Lake St. Helen, are our biggest resource. And we are in the process of getting them squared away regarding the dams, management, dealing with the attorneys, engineering firms, et cetera, and have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on these same lawyers, engineering companies, et cetera. And now we have one of the most qualified individuals uh, available, uh, contractors in Michigan, if not the most qualified. Asking to have the consulting pay agreement increased to meet the market rates for a lot of reasons that weren't apparent when his contract was put in place. We're very fortunate to have Chase Shemke as a local resident to be our delegated authority, someone who has lived in the area his entire lifetime and who has more credentials than I can mention. Who would we get to take his place? I'd venture to say to get someone with his qualifications would be nearly impossible and much more expensive. Chase has already saved us over a million dollars on the Holton Lake project that would have never happened except for his expertise. Levels on all three of our lakes are being managed closer to the legal levels now than ever before, even though he doesn't have the tools to effectively manage them in the future. If we are to have Michigan's other Great Lakes brought up to the legal standards that is required, we need to have the best qualified person and organization we can have to handle this job. Or maybe we really don't have Michigan's other Great Lakes here in Roscommon. I sincerely doubt that we can find anyone local that has even applied for the job with his credentials. So that means we have to go outside the county. And if we were to go outside the county, I doubt we'd find someone as qualified as well if we did. It would probably cost about three times what he's asking. I can't believe anyone would complain about an increase in compensation when in the long run, it will, be, uh, it will be paid for by the special assessment districts and it isn't gonna impact our budget. Now isn't the time to be cheap. The compensation is not going to be even part of our budget. This increase is not going to cost us, it's gonna save us. Our lakes are too important to change horses in midstream. Chase has stepped into a hornet's nest because the previous board chose to create three 
special assessment districts for all of our lakes at the same time, which in hindsight was very foolish. Now we're juggling three balls. And if we lose Chase Shemke, I can only imagine the lawsuits that will be coming our way if we have unqualified people trying to be the delegated authority when we had someone like Chase doing the job. Keep this in mind. If we're taken to court for mismanagement of our lakes, we will have to answer the following questions. What did you do to manage the levels on your three lakes? Didn't you get rid of the mo one of the most qualified delegated authorities that you ever had and had hired him just six months earlier? How much was he asking for? Was it a wise decision to take on three lakes for the SAD development at the same time? Aren't your lakes important to you? How much was he wanting to be paid? What is the market rate for somebody like Shemke? Who did you get to replace him? Did you have someone lined up before you terminated his contract? Before we make the decision to terminate our relationship with Shemke Consulting, we better have an organization to take up the slack. I'll tell you this, if you think we have lawsuits going on right now, you haven't seen anything if we don't keep Shemke Consulting on the job. Don't be short-sighted, think about the long-term, Circumstances have changed. Chemke needs to be treated fairly and we need to step up to the plate. Special assessment districts will be paying the bill and according to the record, he saved them even more than a million dollars at this point in time already. This increase isn't gonna cost us. It's gonna save us. Thank you. Madam Chair. Commissioner Milber. I appreciate my colleague's passion and preparation. Let's be transparent though. How much is Chase making right now per hour? $75. How much is he asking to go to? $125, he said. Chase Shepke could be my best friend. He could be my brother. He signed a contract and I think we should adhere to the $75. We should, we should adhere to the $75. I am not in favor of raising his pay. Yes. I don't have a problem with the increase. I've seen what he's done. I know what he has done. Uh, I don't have a problem with it. And I'd like to see it for a motion or two. Thank you. The initial contract with Shopkey Consultant LLC was rated at $75 an hour. He's completed, he's completed the first phase for Houghton Lake and the pay request is not unreasonable for many reasons. Chase will be using more of his training and knowledge in the next phase to help oversee a long-term project. He's local, he cares about the community, and he has proven his ability to work quickly, efficiently, and already has saved the Houghton Lake SAD a million dollars on the initial phase. When I look at current contractors and what are, they are paid an hour, he is still below the average with the requested amount of 125. We originally put this position out for bid. If you remember, nobody wanted it because of all the controversy that surrounds these lakes. This company has stepped up and done an outstanding job. Although I don't like doing pay increases, I believe that if we do not, the residents and the county will, will suffer and will end up having to find a new delegated authority. In turn, I think that it's gonna cost the residents and the SAD more money down the road if we have to hire somebody from out of town to do the job that he's doing. Also, um, when we posted this job, nobody had the realization of what this job was going to get into. We only had one outfit bid it, and that was Shepke LLC. We accepted that bid. Since that's all been going on, it's come to realization what that job entails and the expertise that he brings to that job, how valuable that is. He is always concerned about our citizens. He has saved our citizens a tremendous amount of money with his knowledge. And I think $125 is cheap. Other than our constituents and our citizens of this county, our lakes are the most important thing we have. This is not a time to be cheap. When I quit plumbing two and a half years ago, it cost $100 for me to knock on your door. He's only asking for 125 today. And he has more qualifications than I did as a plumbing contractor. 
I think we ought to approve this and at the next board meeting, approve his wage increase. Yes. I appreciate the, the passion and commitment by my fellow commissioners, but I, st I still stand by my, my thought process. He signed a contract for $75. And I believe he should adhere to that contract. Thank you. Madam Chair? Yes. In the business world, back when I was initially starting out, my company hired a vice president of sales and they brought him in and he knocked the cover off the ball. They ended up paying him, it was like half a million dollars the first year. And they came around and they said, Jeff, we can't afford to pay that kind of money. No matter what the great job you've been doing, we can't afford to pay you that kind of money. Adjustments are made in contracts. Contracts are always adjustable. So that's why I'm, I'm in favor of making this adjustable upward. He isn't being paid enough. It's well below the market rate. And I, and I support this $125 increase 100%. I make a motion that we address this at the next meeting and offer him $125 wage. I second. That would be a motion. We don't make two weeks. No, no we don't make two. Um, doesn't his contract stay like, mm -hmm. 30 days? Mm -hmm. 30 days. Huh? 30 days. Yes. 30 days. So I know that we've been bringing up the contract and things like that, but his contract does state at any time either party can have 30 days and they can walk away. So just to bring that to light. It wasn't a forever contract. It's not, you know, within 30 days, either party can split. Um, we'll have a motion in two weeks at our next meeting and we'll decide on that. No, we don't. Public comment. Yes. yes. Since we're coming into the summer months, I would like to give um, our commissioner, our chair, a note regarding the uh, Eagle Permit funding. What does the note state, Mr. Uh, Mr. Fry? Well, it's it's a proposal that I uh, would hope the um, commissioners would make the Higgins Lake Land Conservancy regarding the uh, funding of the Eagle application. So keep the ball rolling on this. Is that something that can be read into the record, Madam Chair? I don't think so. I, I would like to see it. Um, uh, I just wrote that yep. you, you understand? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yep. And the commissioners among yourselves can figure out. We'll all get a copy. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I'll make sure everybody gets a copy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Yes. I just want to say you know, a lake level and management millage. Um, there's still the ability to put that on a November ballot. There would be only the cost of putting the language together. And uh, maybe you can avoid all these special assessments. We just did a countywide millage to cover the costs. Um, and then regarding Shep Key's increase, I'm just curious at the next meeting, are you going to have what the total of that increase is going to do to affect the special assessment? How much it's going to increase? Thank you. Yes. Getting to be a habit. Craig Cotterman, uh, Old Trail Drive, Holton Lake. I think you're running for office or something. Huh? I don't, I'm doing that just to be a pain in your side, Eric. That's the only reason I'm doing it. I'll never get elected because I'm too outspoken.
It's just to clarify a few things. Uh, your delegated authority, uh, I believe he stated that the Spicer's report was useless. Uh, and uh, you've retained Spicer's as a consultant here as well. Is that right? You don't answer questions. Pardon? Don't answer questions. Oh. Public comment. He's from Spicer's group. And I guess uh, the dam is closed at Hope and Lake. Uh, you have a minimum flow to keep the river flowing. I see you nodding your head, so I guess you're answering questions that are being censored. I'm just uh, nodding my head because I'm making notes. Oh. Up in Michelle, see if she's got any towels over there. No, <laughs> no smile. Better hear you on a timer. <laughs> I, last I looked, Hope and Lake was above legal level. And I guess I can't ask you if it is today or not. I didn't look. Uh, but if it is above legal level, uh, you'd be banking water. Uh, I guess you've, some people have went to trial already. And some of you have not quite made it there. I don't know. Uh, I don't know who gets to go on trial and who doesn't for banking water. Uh, I believe uh, we have 15 days to file with the tax tribunal. Uh, are you postponing? I can't ask you. Uh, I guess I'll have to find out. By uh, postponing your decision here, does that mean it postpones my due date? I see it nodding your head. I guess you will answer any questions. I've read the Spices report, and in it, it didn't mention anything about the commissioner's banking water. Of course, it's a, the one I read was an older report. Uh, it did tell you ways so it would reduce the flooding at Houghton Lake. Uh, talked about downstream channels, perhaps opening the dam up before uh, before a rain event. Uh, get a head start on uh, a head start on trying to stop the flooding that goes on at Houghton Lake. And one other thing, you said parcels to be added. Uh, I understood it. You had parcels to be added to the assessment roll, but you couldn't do it because you would have had to go in front of the judge again. And uh, I don't think that's fair not to include all those parcels that should be in the special assessment district because you don't want to go to the chamber and say, hey, add these, add these parcels. I guess that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Okay. One more. Okay. Again, I'm Dave Shinneman. Um, and I understand the thing about Chase uh, getting an increase, and I'd be all for it myself if it was me. Um, but don't we have a drain commissioner that that is supposed to be like helping on issues of water containment and stuff like that? I think that's part of their job. And isn't Chase like running for office of drain commissioner here in November? I think he's unopposed. We can't answer. I'm just saying. Yeah. I, I just think you guys take this in. But isn't he like running for the drain commissioner, when, would he fill into this position and still be doing the lake level? Um, I'm just thinking this, you guys could discuss this with you, thinking about his raise. So would that raise go <laughs> into his new position or does it all of a sudden he's done with the SAD district and he loses his $125 and now he's just a drain commissioner? Um, just those are my ideas and I just don't understand I, I want to keep Chase because I do think he's doing a good job, even though he hasn't contacted us because I did go to the lake level, uh, all the dams. Um, but there were some questions there at Houghton Lake. You guys were there. Uh, people were asking, do we really need a new dam? Can we repair the one we have? Um, and Chase was making it sound like, yeah, we could. So, I mean, you guys are saying he saved a million dollars, but I think some groups are taking a million dollars or quite a bit of money in legal fees. And that's where most of our money's going. Instead of going to a dam that should be just maintained or put a new dam in. 
And that's all I want to say. But think about, is Chase really going to be the drain commissioner? Is that going to be his new position? And, and is he going to be paid just drain commissioner pay? Or does he get like double dip kind of pay? Thank you. Any other public comment? Nobody on Zoom, Andy? Okay. With that, then this meeting is adjourned and we will have the work session begin at 1020. Session June 12, 2024 at 1022 a.m. Renewal of the Housing Interlocal Agreement. Hmm? Oh, we're on the work session. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Controller Administrator, Ms. Valentino. So we are currently entered into an interlocal government agreement with Crawford County for the purposes of um, administering housing um, CDG, BG um, program income, which is essentially those emergency housing grants that are available, i.e. your roof collapses um, while well goes out um, for the residents of Ross Common County. This came about roughly this time last year. The contract expires at the end of um, June. We would be looking to renew this so that it would be July 1, 2024 through July 31st, 2025. Um, that would take us through the whole entirety of the program um, and finalize with the state for their fiscal year as well. So the way that the costs work for this is um, they receive either $7,000 annually from the county or 18% of the collected program income funds, which is allowable by the state. Um, so if we get $100, they get $18 of that for them, um, or we make up the difference. But this year, we will not have to make up the difference. There have, there have been enough projects. Um, so this allows for those funds in Ross Common County that are eligible in Ross Common County to be spent to continue to be utilized um, at a cost of $7,000 at the most to the county general fund. If for some reason we spent nothing um, versus what used to be a $90,000 department. So this is simply a request to the board to continue this. Um, personally, I think it's gone really well. Hannah, who is the uh, administrator of, of the housing program in Crawford County, um, she is excited, she is intelligent, she has done this forever. Um, she has several ideas on how to increase usage in Ross Common County. Um, we have had a lot of projects that come into play that with the uh, increased costs over the last 20 years, um, there's a cap of 10,000 that the board 20, three years ago, put on this grant of 10,000 for projects. Um, we could even do more and expend more money um, once, once this is approved. And then she could come back and discuss that with you of maybe lifting that cap, rising that cap um, of some instances. She's also looking, um, we have a predominant amount of, we have a lot of modular homes in our county. Um, and that is where a lot of the need seems to come from, but we would need to get approval from the state in order to, to utilize these funds on modulars. Um, and that's something that she'd be willing to work on too. And that would all be included in that $7,000. Um, and we only spend seven again, if she doesn't make seven off of her 18% that she can collect in for state guidelines. So I would ask that you guys um, consider approving this at your next regular meeting in two weeks. Any questions? Okay. We will, we have support to put this on in two weeks. Okay. We will do that in two weeks then. MSU extension 2023 annual report. Hello. Well, um, I brought an exhibit today. <laughs> um, and uh, my name is Julie Darton. I'm the district director for MSU Extension. 
Um, and my seven counties include Ross Common County. Thank you for the opportunity to be here with you today. Um, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to learn more about lake level control structures uh, this morning. Um, it was my first meeting uh, about that uh, that I did prior to this meeting. Um, the work that we do in MSU Extension is really in response to community needs with an eye to make people's lives better, to improve the lives of Michigan residents um, through our work and by providing um, educational information that we can, we can do. So providing information, answering questions from the public, delivering education at various sites. Um, and what you have in front of you is a hard copy of our 2023 annual report uh, 2023 saw a great deal of change here in Ross Common County. Um, we, uh, we said farewell to our um, wonderful um, support staff person in February, and we gained a new staff person in our community nutrition instructor position uh, in mid-year, roughly, Alexandra. And I think you see some of the impact of that shift in the numbers that we are showing for 2023. Um, but overall, we still feel that we're delivering a valuable service to folks in Ross Common County and we pledge to try to do as much as we can to increase the number of people that we can reach with the information that we provide. So um, we provide information and resources in a number of different areas. Um, you're familiar with the work that we do uh, in community development, natural resources education, um, that programming. Um, just this last week, um, Julie Crick was at the Kirtland, or in the last two weeks in the Kirtland Warbler Festival, as well as at the last weekend at a kids fishing event on Houghton Lake, um, along with information about preventing invasive species from having an impact on our lakes. And our work in natural resources really does help people understand how they can be good stewards of those resources. And I heard you talk about that in the meeting that that you just had right before this. Um, we do offer education for people about how to be good stewards of lakes um, through a program called um, Inland Lakes 101. Um, and so that's, a, that's an opportunity that people can at their own pace um, take in a course and also experience the opportunity to hear speakers um, on those topics. Here in Ross Common County, we've had the unique experience of doing a state or a countywide tourism assessment. And some of you may have attended programs in communities uh, reporting on that. Um, that work was done largely in 2023. And that um, first impressions tourism assessment really does um, give some ideas of of the assets, how those are viewed by people who don't live in the county, and also um, gives an idea of some of the things that might um, warrant some improvement that would make the experience for visitors better. And I know that's a double-edged sword for many of people in your communities. <laughs> like they want tourism, but they also value quiet living sometimes. Um, and so uh, trying to find the right balance for communities. And so as we move off from that assessment, resources from that team can help with future planning. Um, and um, it's interesting that I would mention planning because we also were involved two or three years ago in strategic planning. Um, and we still uh, think that that has value for the county in moving, moving our programs forward. Um, our, in our community development area, we also offer education for elected officials, and I've talked to you about that before. Um, our governing, governing essential series is going to be offered again in August and then in December as well. And in November, we will have a series of new county commissioner training happening again, um, which is an effort to try to make sure that county commissioners have the skills that they need to understand the complexity of uh, the way that government, um, the way that the state government and constitution has delegated certain responsibilities and authorities to uh, county commissioners. Um, but the other programs that we offer can serve officials at various levels. Our health and nutrition programming tries to meet people across the lifespan. Here in Ross Common County, we Extension is the lead agency for Senior Project Fresh, which is a program that connects older adults with um, with uh, coupons that they can use to buy fresh produce at local 
farmers markets and groceries. And that's an important program um, that connects people with that resource and also includes education about how they can manage their food dollars and create the most nutritious um, you know, diet for themselves. Um, we do work around um, outreach to veterans around health and nutrition as well. And specifically trying to help veterans understand that they can receive food assistance benefits. Many people who have served our country don't take advantage of these programs because they feel like they can find resources and they know how to take care of themselves. And certainly they do, but they also fought for many of the resources that um, are afforded to citizens in our, in our states and in our country. And so we're doing our best to reach out to veterans. Um, we have a new person working in Iosco County who's gonna be reaching out to the entire region around that issue and also providing some health focused programming, um, including stress management, um, understanding how sleep plays a role in your ongoing health, um, disease management, um, prevention work. Um, and with older adults, we have programs around um, balance and Tai Chi. Those are things that you know, we have a lot of demand for and we know that people really like them. We oftentimes will have waiting lists for those programs. Um, we're certainly proud of our 4-H and youth development programs, and we uh, would like to have more youth involved in 4-H and youth development, but just a few of the things to highlight. Um, we had a, a sewing club at Becky's Best Sewing Machines in Holden Lake, which was really popular and grew as the program went on. Youth um, were able to learn how to sew and um, you know, do small projects in, on site there and also gain a skill um, to, to continue to um, make clothing or other items by learning how to sew. Um, we've had a basketball program at the craft center for uh, youth that happened in sa on Saturdays um, in the winter spring. Um, and that was really successful. And then we have a one-time events. So coming up, for example, we have a teen night on Saturday at the Northern Center in Houghton Lake. We're really hoping we have teens show up just an opportunity for um, teens to get together and play games and have have you know some special time. We hope that we'll have um, enough kids that we can actually teach some kids how to play pickleball. And I know that that is a growing <laughs> and exciting trend. Um, but also statewide events like Exploration Days, which is next week. Um, Exploration Days allows youth the opportunity from 12 to 19 to go to Michigan State's campus, to stay on campus and engage in some hands-on learning opportunities that may connect them with either a career or a lifelong passion. And certainly uh, we're excited about, about those opportunities as well as 4-H Day at the Breslin Center where youth can attend a basketball game um, and 4-H Day at the Tigers, um, which is an opportunity for youth to attend a major league baseball game. Um, and then we have child and family development programs which try to help parents tackle thorny problems that they are experiencing with kids age birth to five, um, trying to build a network among parents where they can get answers and talk about the struggles of raising kids, which is, even though it's always the same struggle, there are some new nuances that make things difficult. So we're talking to parents about how much screen time is appropriate at what age and um, then lifelong struggles like my kid won't go to sleep or they're a picky eater. Um, so all of those things um, are things that we're tackling. And you, you're aware that we started as an organization that worked with agriculture and we're really passionate about making sure that Michigan has a thriving food system. And we work with agriculture across all the many different things that are raised in Michigan. And we're trying to make sure that not only are we producing food and products that serve people here in Michigan, but also that we're taking care of those farmers and growing the next generation of people who will be farmers. Um, the average age of farmers in the United States continues to rise. Um, farmers don't really retire. <laughs> um, and so helping farmers be resilient, plan for their future and also manage their own stress. Um, farming is a very difficult, uh, very difficult profession, even in the easiest of times. But when we have, um, you know, uh, strange weather patterns that are unanticipated, and, you know, pests and disease that are continuing to arrive um, on our shores and emerge. 
um, and, and all kinds of things that can affect, um, you know, international markets and trade, all of those things. So as you're aware, um, we do have a millage in, in cooperation with the Economic Development Committee here in Roscommon County. We'll be on the August 6th budget. Um, we're really hopeful. We're gonna be doing a lot of work in cooperation with the Economic Development Co Corporation to talk to citizens about what we can offer and how we are benefiting, um, how we're benefiting the people here in Roscommon County. And we're gonna continue to do that work. Even if what we hope happens on August 6th doesn't happen, we're gonna continue to be here and to do that work and have conversations with you. And you'll see me in 2025 talking about the year we had in 2024. Um, and thank you so much for this time to talk to you about the work that I do. If any of you has any questions about anything that I've talked about or other programs that we offer an extension, please let me know. Do I, do I acknowledge or? No, okay, sorry. I don't no, know. That's okay. okay. Um, last year, we did not fund MSU, correct? Correct. That's correct. And, but you still did quite a bit of work in Roscommon, even without the funding or? Yes, you know, um, we work in 83 counties in Michigan and there's a huge diversity as you're aware in counties, if you're, you're, I know you're all connected with the Michigan Association of Counties. And so, you know, we try to, we try to approach that as a partnership and work hand in hand. We acknowledge that communities can have difficult challenges and fall on difficult financial times. So Michigan State University has stepped in to bridge the gap of funding here. Um, you know, and we have also reduced some of what we offer. So without, for example, a support staff person in our office, we can't promote programs as much as we did. And I think that's an element of why our numbers were a little bit lower. Um, we don't have someone who's focused on doing the contact and outreach to the community that we did. Um, but we are still offering services because we don't wanna walk away and we do, I am hopeful that uh, about the future and about the opportunity. So um, I can't say that this uh, will go on forever, but I also don't have a firm, it's this or else moment. Um, that's something that I'll talk with our leadership about um, and, and hopefully with, with all of you as leaders about as we go forward. Last question I believe for me. Okay. What do you do at a Kirtland Warbler Festival? Well, um, you know, people are passionate about birding in Michigan. And so the Kirtland Warbler Festival um, is, you know, celebrates this uh, unique species that is native to our area. It brings birders from all over the world um, to see. And so um, from what I understand, uh, a lot of agencies will have tables and um, share information at that festival. Um, you could talk with Julie Crick about, you know, the kinds of folks that she interacted with, but I she just, said she I had a very curious. busy day. It sounded kind of silly. I was, I was wondering, what do you do? You warble around or what do you, you know? Yeah, they used to do tours. Yeah. Current okay. college tours, okay. yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. So next is the DTMB MPSCS Roscommon County Restated Integration Agreement. <laughs> um, so I will do two prefaces to this. Um, the first one is, as you guys are aware, um, Sheriff Stern and myself are currently overseeing um, E911 while there is a search for the director position going through, which is why you're hearing from me about this contract. Um, so this is actually the Michigan Public Safety Commission system, um, and it is the Department of Technology Management and Budget um, Office of the Public Safety Communications. So essentially this, this contract is an amended contract that has a lot of legal te technological um, verbiages that have been changed in this. But essentially the contract outlines what the Roscommon County E911 um, can expect from the state and what the state expects from us in regards to uh, servicing radio communications and radio frequencies, um, proper usages, proper technological um, requirements in order to continue with safety communications. 
So this got um, pushed back over the last several months and it came to my attention about a week and a half ago, thank goodness, um, as it's supposed to actually be done by the end of June. Um, but yes, yeah, so that came to me through a, a roundabout sort of emails from the state saying, oh, by the way, this agreement needs to be into place. So would, do we just need a motion at the next? Yep. Yeah, so what it would be would be a motion by the board. Um, there's no cost to this agreement. It is a usage, joint usage agreement as it goes, but it would be a motion um, request at the next week regular meeting to approve signature of this. Madam Chair? Yes. Is there, are we able to fulfill our end with that agreement? We can. Vanessa's here just in case there was like fancy technical stuff that you really needed. But yes, we can. Any other questions? Okay. We'll put it in for a motion. Emergency management millage. Discussion of the whole. Commissioner Astrigan, this was originally brought by you, so I'll let you start. Great. Well, I'm hoping that we can get this in uh, millage for the uh, November election. Uh, I know Vanessa is here to answer any questions also, but uh, a 0.5 mil, uh, easy to 0.5 or 0 0.05, one or the other, get the zeros mixed up sometimes. Uh, point, point, oh, it's a point 0.1. Okay. That's right. <laughs> So a 0.1 millage. Uh, right now we're paying for it out of our general fund. It would be good, I think, as I've mentioned many, many times before, government's responsibility is protection of its citizens. And foreign or domestic, or in a lot of cases, natural disasters. And that's what the emergency planning is all about. I've been in several meetings with Vanessa and she does a great job. She's on top of everything. Uh, we're not talking about uh, that much money to put it on the ballot and we'll let the citizens make the determination if they want emergency planning. I think that that's a fair way to go and uh, it's a negligible amount. So hopefully uh, uh, we can get that uh, millage written up and uh, approved in our next meeting. Any questions, comments? Yes. Um, the budget is a responsibility of this board. It's our responsibility to balance the budget every year and to ensure that we can balance the budget every year. If we should see shortfalls coming, it's a responsibility of this board to go to the public and ask for funds to take care of the shortcomings. I don't think keep going to the public for little itty bitty things that is not really gonna cure our budget problems is being responsible. Should we need, find that we need to go to the public for money to balance a budget, then we should decide what it's gonna take to balance the budget as a whole. That's my feeling, not huh? And Chair, sure. I don't think this, um, yeah, your turn, go ahead, Mark. In, in respect, maybe maybe bad choice of words, bitty bitty. This is an important village. It's important for the public to have a emergency management that's responsive and can be articulated at a moment's notice. And I, I, I appreciate Rex's comments, but I believe this is not an itty bitty thing. It's an important village that needs to be pushed through by the public. The comments that, thank you, Madam Chair. And, and more importantly, I think we give that choice to the public. This is a, a matter of choice. In other words, we're not directing money to be spent for emergency management. If they don't want emergency management, then we cut it out, then we've got more money for the general budget. I general fund. disagree. This county can't go without emergency management. Right. So we can put it out to the people, but if it's still a no, they'll have to offer it. You still have to offer it. And, I and, and it's, Vanessa does extremely good with us probably the best one we've ever had oh, i'd agree with that but it's something we need to keep in place to figure it out and i'm all in favor for a millage thank you yes. and i hope i didn't come across harsh i think those were just a poor choice of words the bottom line is important that this millage stand alone it's important this millage is offered to the public 
with that then um your support to move it on to I'll make this. the next meeting for a motion yep, and language that. can you get in with someone and work on language Jody, can you work on that or do you want me to work on that or what would you like to do? Or do you Jody? want me to just email everybody the one you and I and Vanessa already worked on? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes, we're good. Okay. <laughs> Correction of ordinance numbering. Our county clerk and register of deeds, Michelle Stevenson. So you have a little bit of light reading. Presented my I get fancy red folder. Um, so with the passage of the soil erosion ordinance, um, Heather Pratt in the clerk's office, she noticed that there was some duplicate numbers. So then we went through and we were looking at it and um, yeah, we, we it, it happened before us as well. So there was clearly not a, a very good tracking system. So then I had um, Colleen and Kim work together and they went through and found and pulled out all of the ordinances that have been adopted by the county. <laughs> the, uh, the first one in 1951, which was minor alcohol control. So these are for your reading pleasure. Um, in discussing this at the agenda meeting, um, some of the ordinances are now superseded by state law. So you may be able to repeal some of them. Uh, and so then the numbers may not be an issue, but we have, two number twos, two number fives, and two number sixes. So we need to uh, take the action to get these properly numbered, repeal whatever we need to repeal, if we can repeal it, and go from there. Yes. Which, one do you, which ones do you feel need to be removed? The minor alcohol control, we, that's, that's a state thing. Um, the decency one we have to take a look at. Uh, I don't know. I'm sure that I haven't read them yet. Uh, the phosphorus fertilizers, we need to take a look at that one. I mean, that's not a duplicate number. But planning commission, number five, and then there was an animal control amendment that was also numbered number five. And then there was another animal control amendment that was numbered number six. And then soil erosion came in at number six also. So we need to... Uh, get those figured out. But I mean, I can ask uh, the prosecutor's office to also look, take a look at them and which ones. Are they the ones that should be handling this or, I mean, who's gonna handle it? You, you adopted them. Not you per se, but the board right. per se. So, I mean, right, if everybody's in charge, nobody's time. in charge, I mean. We'll come over before we ask questions. Yeah, it's just, it's not something that I expect you to fix right now or in two weeks. Right. We need to take a look at it and we need to go through the process and figure out what the whole process is. I just wanted to bring it to this board's attention that this is something that needs to be addressed. Madam Chair? Yes. I think we need to rescind ones that are not needed or are duplicated by the state and then have the others renumbered so that things are correct. I would agree. So we all need to take a look at them yep. and and revisit it and maybe the first meeting of July. Yeah. So there's plenty of time. Everybody okay with that? Should we be having any subcommittee meetings on this or something like this? Because it's I mean it's well, sounds I'm harder like than it, I'm it sounds like it's She's kind of given us a thing. Yeah. Okay. A little outline on the front that kind of gives us. I mean, we have three on here that talk about animal control. Two of them are amendments. So obviously, I don't. Well, no, because legally, every time you want to amend an ordinance, you create a new ordinance. Okay. So we That's could get rid of a different number. But what happened was some of these ones in the 50s, nobody prior to um, the current staff kept any kind of records of ordinances in the county. So we didn't know that we had a 1950 ordinance regulating the possession, purchase, and consumption of alcohol by minors, nor an ordinance passed in the 70s that controls obscene, sadistic, or masochistic literature recording or images. Um, so those were kind of hidden out there. The first one that we thought we had was the animal control ordinance as number one. Um, so now that we know what's going on, 
basically it's some of these ones they're state laws against and the county doesn't rule where pornographic material can be that's a township thing um so those would be ones that it's like okay the, there's no nothing left for this so you repeal them the number still stands as a repealed number um it's just making sure that the board of commissioners is aware of what's out there um if you think that some of these are defunct or state law has replaced an ordinance that was put into place then we can repeal those so they're not active anymore um and we'll correct the numbering that's michelle and i can come up with the numbers once you decide what you don't want anymore and we no longer have an active planning commission in the county level so that's another thing to take into consideration Any other questions, comments? With that being said, we will adjourn and our regular meeting, we will start at 11 o'clock. Commissioners, regular meeting for June 12th, 2024. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call of Wilson. Here. Oscar. Here. Spencer. Here. 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 Approval of the agenda. Second. Discussion? Roll call? Ostergren? Yes. Spencer? Yes. Yes. Milburn? Yes. Motion carried. Approval of the consent agenda. Are there a consent agenda includes our meeting minutes from May 22nd, 2024. Class A in the amount of $762,093.15. Claims and accounts in the amount of $271,828.46. Correspondences from the rest Common County Economic Development. Resolutions um, regarding the governor's budget from Branch County, um, Lake County, and then the Northern Michigan Regional Entity and the MSU report to the partners. Our monthly, in our MAC legislative updates, the monthly department reports um, from the Sheriff for May 2024 activity report, animal shelter and animal control, April 20. 24 and May 2024 stats and our administrator controller report. Roll call, please. Milburn. Yes. Spencer. Yes. Oster Green. Yes. Wolfson. Yes. Russo. Yes. Motion carried. Public comment. Is there any public comment? Yes. Come up. Make sure the green light is on and state your name, please. Rich Castle, Community Affairs Manager at Consumers Energy. Um, morning. Um, I just uh, wanted to be here to respond to the comments that were made by some of the board members on May uh, 22nd, which your our last uh, meeting regarding the bearing of the uh, line along Emory Road. Um, I wanted to clarify what we could or could not do. So the power line that is proposed for Emory Road is a high voltage distribution line. That line cannot be buried. So I wanted to clarify that there's a reason we can't bury that line. The undergrounding pilot project that Consumers Energy is currently conducting statewide is for the low voltage distribution. And those are the lines that actually feed the homes. The HVD line is the line that actually feeds the substation, which reduces down the power to be able to feed the community. So I just wanted to clarify what, what was going on with that. Um, I, I know there's questions about it, but I wanted to make sure that you're aware that 
the LVD system is the system that we're looking to underground, not the HVD system. Um, also, I wanted to discuss the wild, uh, wildfire risk mitigation plan. So this is something that was recently announced by Consumers Energy, working with the Public Service Commission. Um, there are certain things in, the, in that plan that may have some impact here in our region, maybe even Roscommon County. Um, I don't know all of the particulars about this yet, but that was something that a press release was made about. And so I wanted you to understand that that's all part of our reliability roadmap, something else that I had discussed at a previous meeting. Uh, the reliability roadmap is something that uh, the company is taking very seriously about in upgrading our electric system statewide. And to that point, uh, Consumers Energy had um, uh, looked to invest over $9 million just here in Roscommon County this year alone. And that's the highest, at least in the region that I serve. So I want you to know that Consumers Energy is investing here in Roscommon County, has invested in Roscommon County in the past couple of years. I've mentioned to you in the past all of the substation upgrade work that we've done, and all of that is critical to making sure that we're serving our customers here in the county, making sure that everyone has the power that they need to be able to do the their everyday life. So um, the HVD system, the upgrade line uh, for the South Shore of Roscommon County is part of that uh, upgrade, is part of that reliability upgrade system that we're looking to do. Um, the $9 million is separate from that, but I, I just want you to understand that uh, we're trying to make sure that the system in the county is where it needs to be to serve everybody. So that's why I'm here today. Um, I'm open to any questions. I know it's not typical of this uh, opportunity, but uh, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer them. Thank you very much. I see Thank you. I have some questions. It's public comment. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. This is public comment. I'm sorry. Any other public comment? Anyone on Zoom? Are there any visitors today? Unfinished business, materials management, planning, county update. Um, there's not a whole lot to update on. We'll have to file a letter of intent pretty soon. We have not heard back from anybody to handle this for us yet. But I assume if we file a letter of intent, it is what it is, an intent to do this. And should we not be able to find somebody to handle it, we can back up and hunt and come up with something else. Um, should we do this possibly? Do we need to do anything, Jody? We'll, we'll, have, to, we'll have to have a resolution to um, do it. just before we do that letter of intent. I think we have time. For the next meeting yeah. to present that? Commissioner, um, Commissioner Wolfson and I drafted up a resolution and he shared that with the appropriate um, state it's, representatives. It's and in our have, board packet also. Yep, and so we can put that on for a motion for approval in two weeks. Okay. And that would authorize Commissioner Wilson to send that letter of intent out on behalf. Please, please review the resolution. It's in your board packet on that. Any questions regarding that? New business, we don't have anything there. So we are on to the motions for our clerk whenever she is ready. <laughs> There's a lot. Okay, number one. Move to authorize the transfer of $190,000 from the tax payment fund to the Houghton Lake Special Assessment Fund for the purpose of funding invoices for work performed related to the Houghton Lake Lake Level Control Structure Project as authorized by the delegated authority. So moved. Second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Milburn. Ostergren. Yes. Spencer. Yes. Wolfson. Yes. Russo. Yes. Motion carried. Number two. Move to authorize the transfer of $70,000 from the tax payment fund to the Lake St. Helens Special Assessment Fund for the purpose of funding invoices for work performed related to the Lake St. Helens Lake Level Control Structure Project as authorized by the delegated authority. Second. Discussion? Oh, yes. I have a question. I should ask it on the last one also. Is this the end of it or will there be potential uh, for future request for payments for the assessment districts. I'm sorry. St. Helen is ongoing, so there should be future coming, yes. 
Okay, but I mean, are we going to be asking for additional, be able to ask for additional funding in the future for all three lakes? I, in other words, is that the end of it? No. Okay. That's, uh, that my was, assumption that was my is question. no. That was my question. Okay. Thank you. I want to say that this was kind of for, hopefully for the rest of the year, was it? Possibly. Based on the information that um, our delegate authority had for potential expenses for the rest of the year at the time that the question was asked, um, yes, he was hoping that this would be all that would be needed to cover any um, additional expenses for 2024. Um, but if things change. <laughs> well, well, what I'm wondering is, I uh, I'm looking at these numbers and the numbers that have actually been spent are considerably more for the special assessment districts. Mm -hmm. So were, were we just taking a portion or that's what we can afford out of the tax fund to pay towards the, the three lakes? Well, for example, in St. Helen, it's gonna be a smaller numbers all the way around. Correct. And it is for Higgins also, I see that. And, and but I know and we spent like- To get us through this phase, this is probably gonna be sufficient. Okay, but we, I know we spent on Higgins close to 200,000, if not more. And we're mm -hmm. looking at 54. I don't know what it's been on Lake St. Helen exactly. It's been more on Houghton Lake also. So that, that's why I'm saying I- I know like the 190,000 for Houghton Lakes is when we approve the assessment roll and stuff like that, that money will go back into the tax payment fund from where it was originally gotten. Mm -hmm. So Houghton Lake. There, 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 it's not, in other words, the county is not paying, essentially what we're saying is the county is not going to pay anything at all long-term towards the initial setup of the special assessment. No, district. we'll pay our share that was it, that's in the assessment role. Well, that's a special assessment. I understand that, but like ours is in 190,000. So the special assessment that the funds that come in have to go back into the tax payment fund. It doesn't go into like our so fund. Temporary loan. Yes, exactly. basically. Okay, so, so, but we'd originally talked that we as commissioners, okay, could use the tax payment fund to pay for the initial setup of the special assessment districts. There was talk about that, yes. But we never voted, we never decided, we never made any I commitments. I understand perfectly well that that's what happened. That's the point I want to make. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the point I wanted to make. No, no, we were under discussion for number two. With no further discussion, we do roll call. Russo? Yes. Ostergren? Yes. Milburn? Yes. Spencer? Yes. Wolfson? Yes. Motion carries. Move to authorize the transfer of $54,000 from the tax payment fund to the Higgins Lake Special Assessment Fund for the purpose of funding invoices for work performed related to the Higgins Lake Lake Level Control Structure Project as authorized by the delegated authority. So moved. Second. Discussion? Yes. Apparently, the discussions that we had earlier about using the tax payment fund for the special assessment districts was just something to calm the crowd down because everybody was so upset. That's the comment I want to make. That may be your take on it. I think my take on it is as we've gotten further into these, I, I don't know how we could take all that money from the tax payment fund to do the first initial phase on all the lakes. There's not enough money in the tax payment. That's what I thought originally. So why was it even thrown out there as a, as a potential thing to be done? I think because originally nobody realized how much it was going to be. I think it was done to calm the crowd down because everybody was so upset. You have the right to that opinion. Okay. I did not, I never, I never thought it was gonna be this much. So I did not go into that thinking in making the comments that we the original, made. The original estimates were out there. The original estimates were. The original mm -hmm. uh, estimates were out there, yes. And Just the, for the startup. Very, and they're very close to what has been spent so far. Not just for the setup. The 1.275 isn't just the setup, Eric, for Holton Lake. 
that's an all encompassing of a lot of things itemized out. What would mean 1.275? For Holton Lake. That, that, the way you're talking is like that's the initial phase that that's what we promised them. So we were talking about split, splitting up approximately six hundred thousand between the three between the uh, three lakes. Now that seems to have gone away for the for the setup. It's partial payment for the setup. I don't see it as two because at that time Houghton Lake wasn't even at two hundred thousand when we originally talked about it. Was projected to be not the setup because the setup was already done on Houghton Lake when we first brought it up. Madam Chair? Yes. We talk about a lot of things at this board, and we talk about a lot of things amongst us. We're always open to discussion on items. That doesn't mean a decision has been made just because we have a discussion. Oh, I agree. I agree. I understand perfectly well what happened. Any other further discussion? Roll call. Spencer. Yes. Wolfson. Yes. Astergren. Yes. Milburn. Yes. Russo. Yes. Motion carried. Number four. Move to enter into a memorandum of understanding with the Roscommon County Sheriff's POAM and COAM unions for certified field training, certified corrections training officers pay of $1 per hour while training officer is actively serving as the assigned trainer to new hires. Payment of training wages is only applicable when both trainer and trainee are working together and a daily observation report is completed. Cadets are not considered trainees for the purpose of FTOCTO. Second. Discussion? Roll call? Ostergren? Yes. Wolfson? Yes. Hunter? Yes. So? Yes. Milburn? Yes. Motion carried. Number five. Move to authorize Michelle M. Stevenson, Clerk ROD, to enter into contract with U.S. Imaging at a cost of $8,562 for the purpose of scanning Roscommon County Board of Commissioners minute books from 1875 to 2024, expense to be paid through the Clerk ROD department with budgetary savings accumulated to date. So moved. Second. Discussion? That's going to be awesome. Thanks. It's really awesome. Thank you. Roll call? Wolfson? Yes. Ostergren? Yes. Spencer? Yes. Milburn? Yes. Russo? Yes. Motion carried. Number six, move to authorize Michelle M. Stevenson, Clerk ROD, to enter into contract with GovOS at a cost of $2,300 for the purpose of converting and uploading Roscommon County Board of Commissioner minutes to the Vanguard Cloud Search program, making them accessible to staff and public. Expense to be paid through the Clerk ROD department with budgetary savings accumulated to date. So moved. Discussion? Roll call? Milburn? Yes. Ostergren? Yes. Spencer? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Russo? Yes. Motion carried. Number seven, move to authorize an annual budget amount of $2,940 for the purpose of hosting and maintaining the upload and conversion of all Ross Common County Board of Commissioners minutes to the Vanguard Cloud Search Program. So moved. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Wilson? Yes. Spencer? Yes. Ostergren? Yes. Yes. Russo? Yes. Motion carried. Thanks. Number eight. Move to institute, as requested by Sheriff Ed Stern, the recruitment incentive program as outlined below. Description. The Roscommon County Sheriff's Office will pay a recruitment incentive to a union employee when administration determines that the position was filled based upon eligible employee referral efforts. Covered positions. A recruitment incentive shall be paid for successful referral to, the, to fill the following positions. Corrections officer, deputy, and part-time court security corrections. Payment incentive amounts. A recruitment incentive of $500 will be paid to eligible employees who refer a candidate that is hired into a covered position. Hired is defined as successfully completing all required pre-employment examinations, testing, and completion of the first scheduled day of work. An additional recruitment incentive of $500 will be paid to an eligible employee once the referred employee successfully completes the RCSO FTO CTO program. Payment of incentive. Incentives will be paid as two separate checks. 
payment of incentive will be a separate payroll check subject to employment taxes, but not eligible for MERS defined benefit withholding calculations. Sheriff administration shall notify payroll in writing of recruitment incentive payment eligibility. Payment shall be issued as a separate check concurrent with a regular payroll schedule. Approval criteria. The determination to pay a recruitment incentive will be determined by the Ross Common County Sheriff. The recruitment incentive program may be dis discontinued upon decision of the Sheriff. Second. Discussion. Roll call, please. Melburn. Yes. Russo. Yes. Ostergren. Yes. Spencer. Yes. Wilson. Yes. Motion carrying. Committee reports. Commissioner Astergan. I have none. Commissioner Milburn. EDC and District Health. Wash your hands. Cool is almost done. Pretty much the same thing they always say, but the thing is, I know influenza is on the way. I'd like to thank everybody for Sergeant John DeWitt's presentation last week, especially Darlene and Dave for being there. Bill was there. Appreciate the support. Sheriff Sparrow was there. All those who made the, the, the ceremony worthwhile. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Commissioner Russo? Uh, personnel, a couple of times we had meetings. At a 911 authority board meeting, I had a 911 special meeting for the authority board. That's it. Thank you. I had the agenda meeting, some personnel meetings. Um, <clears throat> District Health, um, we also discussed there regarding the 2024-2025 budget. Things seem to be in good shape for that. Their fiscal year is different than ours. I believe it starts in September. Um, health Director talked about ticks and the diseases and things that they carry and how to Stay safe and what to do if you do get bitten by a tick. And then we had someone present on the septic ordinance in Lyon Township um, and go over what would be expected as far as who has to have inspections, how often they have to ha happen, who is responsible for that payment to the inspector. Ultimately, the final pass or fail lies with the health department and the possible low income funding if your system does fail, um, who could have possibly apply for low income funding through the state of Michigan to have it fixed. Um, I was unable to attend the hazardous waste uh, event. So I have nothing to report on that at this time. I hope everything went well there without me. I haven't heard any different. Uh, board comment. We will start with Commissioner Astrigan. Uh, thank you. Uh, the tax fund that we originally talked about, and I'm gonna be really quick because I have something else to go over too. Uh, for the lakes was so the county would participate, not just the people in the special assessment district. This county is reliant upon all three of our lakes. And that was that was the reason that the tax fund was uh, who was supposed to be sought for to help pay for the setup of the special assessment districts. And then of course all the projects would then be paid for that special assessment district, not the county. But anyway, uh, other issues I think we need to talk about is uh, regarding the petition drive currently going on on Houghton Lake to change the legal level. Uh, I've been reading posts on Facebook and it's been confirmed that there's a petition drive to change the legal level on Houghton Lake. As a commission, I believe that we need to be concerned and we need to do the right thing and be a little bit proactive to protect the county from potential litigation and public sentiment. I was also informed by our controller that the leader of the petition drive is Dave Terzinski. I don't know if I pronounced that name properly, but anyway, and according to the email correspondence she provided us, he was given the special assessment district list that includes waterfront property listing with the caveat that we didn't have a listing of the specific lakefront property owners. And that was an exact correct response for her to send, but we need to do more. 
The statutes provide and our resolution that was passed in 2019 say that in order to ask for a lake level change, two thirds of the lakefront owners need to provide the commissioners with petitions to do so and give us $10,000. Here's the problem. Everyone needs to know what two thirds of the lakefront owners is comprised of. We don't have such a listing, but we need to get one. It's not our constituents responsibility to guess who is a lakefront owner and who is not. You can't know what two thirds of the total number is if you don't know what the total number is. So whatever is turned in can be validated. This is an untested area of law and we need to protect the county in that regards. And that begs the question, what comprises two thirds of the lakefront owners? I would like this issue added to our next work session. And as the chair knows, I, I did want to add it to this session, but it wasn't because of time constraints. We're at 1130 already. So I hope we can discuss this in the next meeting and I hope I can uh, gain some support on that. Thank you. Commissioner Mulberg, Commissioner Russo. Regarding Houghton Lake, I'm all for hearing it. Everyone knows what I've done over the years. I use the common sense. Hiring it, what? Raising the lake level. I use common sense, it worked out great. 100%. Thank you. So you're in support of us talking about the two thirds next week? Okay. Or next meeting? Okay. Public comment. Anyone on Zoom? Okay. Can I hand these out to you? Yep. And just come up and state your name and make sure the green light is on. Thank you. My name is Christian Marcus. I'm a, a resident of Antrim County. I'm a former county commissioner over there for the last for 10 years. I serve as a township trustee and uh, sat here many times in our Northern Michigan Association meetings. I was vice president of that for a couple of years. Um, I decided to run for the Michigan House of Representatives. Uh, my main reason is because I want to uh, really focus on our local government control that we seem to be losing every session. Um, I want to focus on the bureaucracies that are unelected. Um, we'll, we'll call it the, the declaratory style um, decision making happening within the agencies of our, of our Lansing that are, are directly impacting us and our ability to govern at this both the township, village, city, and our county. Uh, these things are creating uh, unfortunate issues, and you just mentioned one of them. I believe there's a statute that is creating a lot of this problem over in Higgins Lake and Houghton Lake areas. Regardless of whatever ordinance that we're discussing, um, some of these statutes are creating the problems and I think that's where they need to be fixed. And I think uh, our, our citizens would be way more appreciative of our process that needs to stay local. Um, if you know, recently uh, within the last year, there was a, a very serious uh, attack on our, on our local governments and that was the, the solar districts. We all do realize that they provide options for us in green energy, but when they take it away from us at the local level, it will just continue to happen. And I don't think our legislators are doing what they need to do to stop it. So my experience as a commissioner for all those years, and even a little bit of law enforcement, <clears throat> reserve sheriff deputy for four years prior, I do understand how important it is to do that. And I'm not satisfied with what we got today. So. What I'm doing today is to let you know who I am. I would love for you to get to know me and anybody you know, they're welcome to contact me and I would love to, to have a discussion. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Democrat, Republican. Republican. Okay, thank you. August 6th primary. Thank you. Any other public comment? Yes. Michelle Stevenson, County Clerk, Register of Deeds. Um, thank you for approving the motions to get the minutes um, online, available online. I did find out between the last meeting and this meeting that um, we can work and start moving forward. And rather than waiting to get all of the minutes, we can start scanning current minutes and putting, making those available online. So really what we'll be utilizing US Imaging for is more of the back stuff. So we'll do as much as we can in the office ourselves and uploading that. So I do have a call. Um, with my vendor next week, what to see what that would look like. So I just wanted to update you on that. I also wanted to give you an update. So we are in the final phases of getting our ballots printed. The ballots are due to the move ballots, which are military overseas voter 
ballots are required to be to the clerks by June 22nd and uh, absent voter ballots are required to be available five days following that date, so the 27th. Um, so we're just waiting for the final sign off on the state that yes, we can print them. So then our printers will go frantically crazy for the next week and a half and printing ballots. Um, we had to order basically 100% of what we have for registered voters because with early voting and AVs and permanent ballots and ballots getting lost in the mail, uh, not getting returned, and then being a primary election where voters have to choose, they have to be consistent and vote either all Democrat or all Republican, we tend to have a higher percentage of spoiled ballots for the August election. So just to, to ease the clerk's um, stress and not having to worry about running out of ballots, they will have approximately 100%. Um, one of the other things that my office is working on is that we did come across that there are some committee appointments that need to be made. So I will be presenting at the next work session, I believe on those. There's like five or six, but um, we there's a couple that I, as the clerk's office and clerk to these committees go and um, clerk. So I take the minutes for those committee meetings. And um, there's a couple of committees that seem to be getting a little, we're not having a quorum present. So that's a waste of the people's time for the people that are coming. So I would really um, like that to be something that's taken into consideration because that is a lot of time out of the people who do show up their day and it's a waste of time. And then things aren't being um, accomplished. So we have minutes that aren't being approved. Um, Speaking of minutes, so one of the projects that I'm also hoping to do, and I did speak with my vendor on it to find out if that was an option, is that with this um, new project, with putting the minutes available, we should be able to start also including other committee meeting minutes as well. So what that's going to look like, what the timeline is going to be on that, with it being an election year and me having pretty much newer staff with a, when it comes to the election stuff, um, it may be something that the bulk of it will get done following November, but that is all. Thank you. Anybody on Zoom? Okay. With no other public comments, this meeting is adjourned. All in favor say aye. aye.